Hey guys, in this episode we're going to take a look at the two ARP sounds and the one pulsating sound that we have here. So we've got those three sounds there and we're going to go over the post-processing and sound design for each of them. And don't forget that there's a free download in the description below. And because it's free to download, I'd really appreciate if you just gave the video a share on any of your social media channels as it helps my channel to grow too. Now admittedly, I know these sounds don't sound that great on their own, but in the context of the mix, they sound really nice and clean. So let's start with this pulsating sound here. So we're in the key of F, so we've gone F, up 7 semitones to C, and then up 5 more semitones to F again. So before I get into the actual sound design, I should first show you the post-processing on the reverb, as the Valhalla Room is doing a lot of work here. So you can hear it with the reverb. And then without the reverb. So we also have a bit of modulation going on here. So within the actual drop, I've modulated the frequency of the auto filter, and that's just opening and closing. Okay, so let's check out the sound design. So like a lot of my sounds, I've started with the mini mono preset in Diva. I've lowered oscillator one by one octave, and then oscillator two by five semitones, and then set the level of that to around 40. So then we have the cutoff up here, but again, like I said, the cutoff is changing with the automation. So you can feel free to just modulate that as you want. And then we have this at 32. We've set this to 10 and then just raise the emphasis a little bit. And then we have the attack here at 53, the decay at 37, and then we have the sustain all the way down. And then we just have a chorus on there as well. And I've just lowered the rate and the wet. So it's a pretty simple sound. As you heard, without the reverb, it's quite dry and dull. And then the reverb really brings it to life. So for the actual reverb, it's Valhalla Vintage Reverb, and I've got the mix all the way up, and a decay of 3 seconds. And then I don't believe I've changed anything else, I think it was just those two knobs. And then here you can see I've cut everything below 400Hz. And now I've just got a little bit of gain staging here for the mix, automated through the utility. And then as you saw, as I showed you before, the auto filter is being automated. So that's everything for that sound, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so for this second melody here, there's quite a bit less modulation going on. So for the cutoff frequency, you can see it builds right up in the build, and then just drops off to a level amount. So I'll just play it now as you watch, and you can see what the automation actually does. So you can see it really brightens up the sound there when you open up the cutoff. Okay, so now into the actual sound design. So for this one, we're using all three oscillators. Oscillator one is turned all the way up. Oscillator two and three are about 42 and 43. Oscillator three is one octave below oscillator one. And oscillator two is five semitones below oscillator one. From there, we've got the cutoff. But again, like I said, that's being modulated, so it's bound to change. We have the frequency modulator depth at 26. The emphasis at 14.5. And everything else here is the same. And then we have the attack all the way down, the decay at 48, and then this decay at 40. And then for the effects on this sound, we have the rotary and the chorus. On the rotary, I've just pulled the mix down a bit. And on the chorus, I've just pulled down the wet and the rate. Okay, so then we have an, a slight echo on here. So when the cutoff opens like that, you can really hear it echoing along in the higher notes. And I've just cut out everything below 110 to not mess with the bass. With this auto filter here, which was just opening up during the build. With a bit of slight compression, and then a Valhalla room. You just cover that down there, just a slight reverb. And 
And as you can hear at some moments, the sound is quite distorted, but it sounds nice in the mix. So finally, we have the second ARP sound that the song changes to. From here, we have the same echo, a slightly tighter EQ, the same compressor and the same echo uh, reverb. And then we just added the chorus as well. So I'll just show you the sound with and without the post-processing. So there's a bit of automation here on the cutoff and I'll just explain what you're seeing. So in here, just after the drop, we pulled the cutoff back as the whole song pulls back and the drop first starts here so it builds up again. And then to keep it interesting, we also have some extra modulations going on because it's quite a simple melody. So you need that automation to keep it constantly changing and interesting. Okay, and then for the sound design for this one, we're just using oscillators one and two. And as is common through a lot of the sounds that you'll see me making, I've pulled oscillator two down seven semitones. And then we have the cutoff, which is being modulated, the frequency depth at 26. So you can see a lot of these sounds are quite similar because what would happen, what happens during my sound design sessions is I start out with the sound that I like. And then as I'm progressing through the song and I'm building it, I'll often duplicate sounds and just tweak them slightly as opposed to getting a whole new sound from scratch. This sort of helps the song sound a bit more cohesive and as if it's all played together. So we have the same decay on these two, no sustain, no attack. And then again, the rotary and the chorus. Okay, so the next video within this series is going to be the lead sound, the pads, and the drone. So as always, thanks for watching. And if you're liking this series, you might want to check out my Lane 8 series, where I did a full in-depth guide on how to make a Lane 8 style drop.